Hello. What I want to talk about today is organic nomenclature. Um, and I want to just do something quick generally about nomenclature and then focus on primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Right, so the key things about organic nomenclature we have written up here, um, I want you to learn the names of key functional groups and structural fragments uh, so that we can communicate. Right, so the sheet I gave you last time, you need to know those terms. Um, you can take a little bit of time to learn them, but we need to know those terms so that we can communicate. Right? And the key is to go from a name to a structure. Um, we're not going to play a game where I'm going to give you a structure and ask you to give me the full chemical name. Uh, you aren't going to need to figure out what the functional groups are that are present. Right? One thing that can be a little bit confusing is identifying so-called primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary atoms. So I want to spend a little bit of time right now going over this uh, to help you as you try to do problems related to this in the future. Right, so the atoms that we care about for primary, secondary, and so on are carbon, hydrogen, halogens, uh, oxygen in terms of alcohol functional groups, and nitrogen in terms of amine functional groups. So I want to just do an example of each of these uh, so that you can see how we determine uh, this type of nomenclature. Right, so if we focus first on carbon, all right, the definition of these sorts of things for carbon is how many other non-hydrogen atoms is that carbon attached to? All right, so how many other non-H atoms is that carbon attached to? All right, so if we look at a molecule like this, Right, and if we just focus on the carbon atoms in this molecule, right, we can start by looking at the methyl group, right? So that's a CH3, right? So that molecule, that atom is attached to three hydrogens and one other carbon, right? So since it's attached to one non-hydrogen atom, that's going to be a primary carbon, right? And one thing to be clear about in this nomenclature, um, we abbreviate primary as one and then the degree sign. That is not first degree, one degree, uh, it's just our abbreviation for primary, right? Uh, if we look at this position here, which is a CH2, so it's attached to two other carbons, that's going to be a secondary position. We look at that carbon, it has one bond to a hydrogen, two bonds to carbon, one bond to nitrogen, uh, and if we look at this carbon, it's attached to three carbons and an oxygen, so no hydrogens, that's going to be a quaternary position. Now, if we look at hydrogen, all right, let's look at uh, a different molecule here. So if we look at that molecule, all right, when we think about hydrogens, all right, it's how many carbons are attached to the carbon bearing the H in question. All right. So how many, how many carbons are attached to the carbon bearing the H in question. All right. So if we think about that for this molecule, if we look at a CH3, right, and again these are all CH3 groups, right, if you focus on those hydrogens, Right, they're attached to a carbon that's attached to one other carbon. Each of those CH3s is attached to one other carbon. So all of these hydrogens would be primary. Right? The carbon they're attached to is attached to one other carbon. Okay? And if we look at down here this CH2 group, the carbon they're attached to is attached to two other carbons. So that would be secondary. And if we look at that hydrogen, the carbon it's attached to is attached to three other carbons. So that's going to be tertiary. Okay. And when we think about this definition, it's actually the exact same definition for halogens. Right? So 
for alkyl halides. All right, and again, F, Cl, Br, I. When those are attached to a hydrocarbon, uh, it's the exact same definition. All right, same as H. All right, so it's again, how many carbons are attached to the carbon bearing the X in question? All right. How many carbons attached? to the C bearing the X in question. All right. And if we look at alcohols, all right, it's the exact same thing. All right. So alcohols, all right, it's the same. How many carbons attached? to the C bearing the OH in question. All right, and again, these may seem like sort of silly rules that we're, we're trying to figure out here, but it's going to help us in terms of communicating uh, reactivity. When we get to different reactions, knowing whether something's primary, secondary, tertiary, there are some reactions that don't work on tertiary positions, for example. Uh, and so it's important for us to know how to, how to label that and name that, right? So if we look at this molecule, we can look at what's going on with the halogens and the alcohols at the same time, right? So if we have if we have that structure, right? If we focus on uh, the two halogens and the two alcohols, right? If we focus on this bromine, the carbon it's attached to is attached to two other carbons, so that would be a secondary alkyl halide. Right? We look at the chlorine. The carbon it's attached to is attached to three other carbons, so that would be a tertiary alkyl halide. Um, and if we look at the OH up here, it looks just like the Cl on the bottom. It's attached to three carbons, so that's going to be tertiary. We look out here at this alcohol. It's attached to a carbon that's only attached to one other carbon. So that's going to be primary. So again, these three, H, alkyl halide, and alcohols, all exactly the same way that you go about doing it. Right? And let me erase, and then we'll do amines. Right, and for amines, it's pretty simple. How many carbons are attached to the nitrogen? All right, so if we have a molecule like that, we can look at each different nitrogen in that molecule, right? If we look at this nitrogen here, it's attached to three different carbons. That's a tertiary amine. We look at that nitrogen, it's attached to two carbons, secondary amine. This nitrogen attached to one carbon, primary amine, right? So again, this is something that we're going to get used to. We're going to do it a lot, um, and it's going to help us communicate.